During this segment of the PADUI Association's online version of the Alcohol Highway Safety School, we'll show you a video which portrays how a highway accident caused by an impaired driver has devastating effects for the family and friends of everyone involved. Be ready to write down any observations you make during the video, and at the end we'll ask you a couple of questions based on the film. A Pennsylvania man is facing up to 20 years in prison after working the night shift and then playing a round of golf with co-workers. While driving home, he crossed over the center line and ran head-on into an oncoming car filled with five people. He admitted to drinking alcohol during the golf match. This was his second DUI arrest in eight months. His first DUI court date was still pending. In the victim's car, one granddaughter and her two children, ages one and three, were injured in the back seat. The grandmother was killed instantly in the front seat, and the grandfather who was driving was rushed to the hospital in very serious condition and is not expected to live. And I ask God. I ask God to take his life so he wouldn't be suffering anymore. Especially when I started understanding what his condition was. So, uh, I deal with that a lot. But I know he wouldn't have wanted to live as a vegetable. And that's what he would have been. It's still hard because I haven't been able to be back to the cemetery. It happened. I make it to the front entrance, and that's all the way I can go. I don't understand the killing part. And then when you go through the trial, you live it all over again. I was the first one to see him shackled. I'm having a reaction. Handcuffed. And in a line with... And in a line with a bunch of other criminals that don't look anything like him. The last place I ever, in my wildest imagination, thought I would be going to visit my son, my youngest son, Donnie, would be in a jail. He was caught for DUI the first time. He was a walking time bomb. I'm a strong advocate of immediate ALS, automatic license suspension, at the time of the arrest. One of his greatest fears is that <laughs> Some of his family members are going to be gone, dead, before he's even released. The one thing that just kills him is not being a part of his little boy's life. And that breaks all of our hearts. Donnie was so overjoyed and ecstatic that he was going to be a daddy. 
He couldn't wait for the birth of that baby. He was so excited. Garrett, where's Daddy? Garrett runs to this framed photograph, and he points to it, and he says, Da, da. Garrett, do you love your Daddy? And old Garrett, who's going to be two on August 13th, takes the photograph and will kiss it. We, we went through the shame and the embarrassment and the guilt and, we all, and the anger. We've gone through all of that. And I will always carry this deep sorrow and regret in my heart for what my son did. Everybody no, in their the family and family. our family, everybody right. has been hurt affected and is continuing to be hurt and affected by this. I think about it every day of my life. Every day. I think about it. on the door one two o'clock in the morning and someone answers the door and you're telling them you're there to tell them that their child isn't coming home they're first disbelieving uh, very much so this denial is the very first thing you get and next it's to blame it on the person who delivers the message and I have over the years been kicked I've been spit upon I've been cursed I've been hit those things happen you have to expect that as part of this job really a guy who was 27 years old lost control hit a tree rolled over he had his new his quote his new girlfriend in the front seat with him uh, she was 32 i believe she had a 15 year old daughter 15 year old daughter was in the back seat she was dead at the end of the crash <clears throat> in the back seat with this 15 year old was his 19-year-old brother. He was dead at the SAS, at the scene. The 32-year-old female who was the right front seat passenger lost her leg. Hit a blood alcohol level, 0.08. An adult male was involved in a crash. Uh, took us a while to figure out where we were going. Uh, he, it appeared he was not married. We went to the address and uh, did some checking first, and it appeared he lived with, yeah, with his mother. Police officer and I went to the front door, knocked on the door. She came to the door, stood at the door, and turned on the light on the porch. And she looked at the police officer, and she looked at me, and she looked back at the police officer, and then she looked at me, and she said, you're Mr. Norris, aren't you? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, come on in. I've been expecting you. Uh, I need you to sit down so we can talk. She said, no, I know why you're here. You're the coroner. And the way my son drinks and the fact that he drives when he's drinking tells me that someday you're going to come to my door, and I've been expecting you. During that time, as you remain there with them, they usually begin to open up a little bit more and begin to tell you about their loved one and what they've lost, and you sit and listen to their pain. You listen to their suffering. And regardless of what anybody says, and then no longer how you've been doing this, I've been doing this for 27 years, you can't sit with families and listen to their pain and not take some of it home with you. So each one of them builds up a little bit as you go on through the years. Six people die as a result of a head-on collision on a Pennsylvania road. Police say the cause of the fatal crash was alcohol. The drinking driver crossed the center line and crashed into an oncoming car, killing four people, including a young child.
The 20-year-old drinking driver survived the high-speed impact with minor injuries, while his two male teenage passengers were killed instantly. The innocent victim's car was one of two cars full of family members, cousins, mothers, and children heading to the movies. After impact, those in the other car pulled over and tried to help the rest of their family. The young child died in his mother's arms. Later at the courthouse, the drinking driver had to be escorted by officials in a bulletproof vest. away a whole family in a night it just from having drinks that you could drink at home and stay at home you could sit at home and drink as much as you can kill yourself sit at home and kill yourself drink as much as you want as long as you don't have to drive but they operated on rocky for 13 and a half hours he was in the hospital i guess for a month and a half then he was laid up in a wheelchair for a couple months and he is working now, so he feels like a man. But it bothers him a lot that he wasn't taking a nap before work. And because he was with those four every day. It's not fair that a, a trip to the movies costs you your life. Like a jigsaw, an old jigsaw puzzle that's no good anymore because you have pieces missing out of it. That's how a family is. And once you take people from a family, and you know, you lose people, it, it's hard. You can't never put that puzzle back together again. It's an old puzzle. You can't never, ever put the, it'll never be whole again. The officer comes up and tells me to sit down. I sit down. And I know what he's going to tell me. Go to the morgue to identify my daughter. Different things. You go to the store and you find something on sale that's in the shade inside. When you, you know you can't pick it up. He's not there no more to wear. You can't explain how you doing. You look good today. You're doing really good. No, you just put a face on and go on. It's your insides are still. You're tore, tore up. And P.O., oh, she looks at the, oh, they're doing really good. No, you, you have no idea what someone feels like inside. <laughs> hear so much about people out there still drinking and driving and with the things that go on you'd think they would learn that this just traumatizes a family I mean life just stopped I mean it got to the point where I didn't know if I could even get out of bed and there's still those days you know it just I still have them days too and it's just it's what upsets me the most is I can't I can't go down to his house and go hang out with him. If I get out of his house, the only time I can see him, the only time I can see him is on a wall, and it's the picture. I had a dream about him just the other night. For some reason, he was in Connecticut, and I don't know why we were in Connecticut. <laughs> But he eventually ended up somewhere down here, and he was saying how he hurt his knee, and he was sitting on the bed holding his leg, and I was just like looking at him thinking, you're here, and I was like running over to hug him, because I couldn't believe he was there. Every day we drive by this scene, it's just so unbelievable. It just 
doesn't seem right when you used to set four plates at the table, now you're setting three. I can't call him up whenever I want now. If I want to go see him or talk to him, I can go to his grave. There's so many should have, could have, would have. I just want to turn back the hands of time. It's insane the way you feel. And you think of that it gets easier or easier on you as time goes by. It doesn't. Pulled over, getting uh, yeah. um, there's son, it ruins your life in all year. in more ways than one. I mean, just you know, lose jobs. Oh, just, you lose jobs. You know, you have the you know the fines, the costs, all that has. I mean, granted, you know, to some people, oh, it's not a big deal, but you know, it, it does. It adds up. It messes up your life, and then you can have the thoughts of you could be out there driving and you could kill somebody, or you could kill yourself, or just interest, you know. Or, running into a tree, you know, and just totally smashing up somebody's property. I mean, you don't want to do that kind of stuff. I mean, right. I mean, if you really thought about it, you know. You don't want to be on you, either You end wouldn't. Of I mean, if you, but, you know, you don't think about it. No, you don't. Until just, you know, one, until it's too late. Any minute. Any, any one of us can Any one of us, it can be anybody. Yeah, that's, right. that's why I love, I love telling my kids whether they're coming, going, yeah, it's always I love you, hugs and kisses, and no matter where you're at, if you're coming, if you're going, or if you just walked in the door and turn around and walk back out, there's still the I love you and the hugs and the kisses. And you know, when I talked, I talked to Johnny, what about half an hour before um, he was he was killed, and it was I love you, and I like I love you too, and I'll see you tomorrow, I'm like I'll see you tomorrow, you know. You know, all of a sudden, he's there one minute you were talking to him, you know, ten minutes ago, and next minute he's gone out of your life forever you know you can't ever talk to him again you know that's one thing that I won't be able to get over is him being my oldest brother and the memories that were gonna be there aren't gonna be there like me being the uncle of his kids and him being the uncle of my kids and now like Best man the thing, this is family. how they're gonna my kids are gonna remember their uncle Johnny is by a picture and not by an actual person it's just sad that it has to be, someone's life has to be taken this way. And to think that you're invincible, that you can get in the car having one, two, three, four drinks, and that you're going to make it home. You could do it five, ten, twenty, a thousand times before, but you never know when that night's going to happen because... It's in God's hands. Right, but then again, it's not also. It's also in the driver's hands too. Um, you know, and she told me there was a really bad accident at home and Johnny and Harry, and I was just waiting for her to say they're in critical condition or they were injured or something like that. And she looked at me and she said, they're dead. Like those words will run through me like a lightning bolt for the rest of my life. Like I will never forget the way that I felt. This is undoubtedly something that you just don't get over and it doesn't get better with time. You learn different ways of coping and dealing with what happened, but it'll never get better because unless Johnny's here, there's just, there's no getting better. There's not one day where we don't all sit down and talk about this, not one day. And we always sit down and we talk about the future and we talk about where he'd be, where we'd be. Like, we lost, it feels like we <laughs> lost more than one person when we lost Johnny because we lost a brother, a best friend, a girl in a way because we could talk to him about anything. Yeah.
Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Even people that I know that knew Johnny or knew Harry, the other friend of ours that was killed, they'll drink and drive, and that's just really sad that people can't learn from such a tragedy. Me being his brother, I had to call my mom and my dad and let them know what happened, but just hearing their, <clears throat> hearing their reactions to it just made you want to just go somewhere and not even be around them because you felt so bad. And that's my, that's kind of hard to say, but I couldn't look at my mom. I couldn't look at the face she had. Hopefully someone will learn and somebody's brother and son and cousin and friend can be prevented from all of this. It was the worst crash I've ever seen in my life. Um, it's something that when you see on television, you see movies, you see uh, accidents. I don't think I've ever seen anything in the movies that came close to this. Uh, when you walk up on a scene and you see a vehicle that looks like somebody stepped on a soda can and there's people trapped inside. Being one of the worst in central Pennsylvania in years, uh, resulting in the death of six people. Uh, at the scene, there was five uh, pronounced dead. Uh, two days later, a uh, sixth victim had died. You can't imagine uh, anybody taking the risk of drinking and driving uh, and then it resulting in the death of six people. Uh, it's very emotional. You see somebody sitting there holding their kid with blood from head to toe, screaming, you know, my baby, you gotta get my baby out of here. It, I mean, it, it really affects you because there's nothing you can do about it. You know, even though the driver of this crash, technically, his life wasn't taken from him, but uh, in a sense, his life has been taken from him because, uh, because of the magnitude of this crash and what happened. Even though he didn't die in the crash like the six other people did, he can pretty much kiss his life goodbye. Subsequently charged with homicide by vehicle with six counts and other charges. I told five families uh, that they had lost loved ones. And again, uh, in the performance of my duties, I'm, I'm obligated to do that and to try and do that in a sensitive way uh, and not show any emotion is difficult. Uh, and again, after it's all over, uh, I have to let my emotions that are bottled up inside release and talk to somebody myself. Um,
Have you known anyone who was injured in an accident caused by an impaired driver? Have you ever thought about these questions in relation to your DUI experience? And please pause after each question and write down your responses. What if I was seriously hurt while driving impaired? How would I live? Who would take care of me? How would my parents and family feel? What if I hurt someone else while driving impaired? Could I live with myself? Would I have to go to jail? And finally, how would my life overall be changed if I was hurt or I hurt someone else while driving impaired?